Okay, for a lot of these mini projects and well, for a, Unity is a game engine, right? So it's designed to make uh, executables, meaning like a game. You click on the application and you're in this non-linear environment. But um, it also, you can output it a linear result as just a movie. Um, you know, it doesn't have the interactivity. But um, this is important for a lot of reasons. Uh, you can capture your output. It doesn't have to be you know, a game because making it an executable adds this extra level of complexity that you know maybe people can run your game, maybe they can't, but you still want to show people things. And so often it's really important to be able to output things as a movie for your portfolio for lots of reasons. And here at the beginning, it'll be much easier for you to just send me a movie of what you made than to keep building an app and just sending me the app. We'll make some apps and then we'll distribute them. But here it makes a lot of sense just to be able to output a movie. And so Unity, this used to be more complicated and now for the most part it's easier. Unity Recorder is the package that uh, makes this pretty easy. So um, all packages now are under Window um, Package Manager. So if you open that up here, this uh, this is where you import packages, things to expand the functionality of Unity. And so let's go ahead and look for Recorder. And if you don't see it, the reason I'm not seeing it right now is because mine says Packages in Project. I want to say All Packages. There we go. So not AOV Recorder. We want just regular Unity Recorder. And we're going to say Install that package. And yeah, for the most part, uh, this is this is better. Uh, it's aware of what version you're running, and it usually doesn't let you uh, install the wrong version, which would uh, break your project. So that doesn't always happen, but uh, for the most part, it's better, especially for uh, approved packages. So this this is not someone else's work. This is uh, package that's you know actually developed at Unity, you know because people use Unity for lots of different things, and so it's a modular in that way. There's the core program, and then they make all sorts of add-ons to it, all sorts of extras that some people need, some people don't, and they they're not all included in the core program because it would be way too big, and uh, so you need to just add the parts you need. And so we want to record quick movies, and Unity Recorder does that pretty great. Good. It's in court, uh, imported, and the only thing you should see down here, if you want to unfurl your packages, if you look to here, that'd be Unity Recorder. Don't touch this. I'm just showing you where it is. And now, how do I actually use this? Let's go to Window, General, Recorder, Recorder Window. Here we go. Great. Uh, again, this is a regular window, and I'll just I usually dock it down here next to this window. And so you can record all sorts of things. Uh, we're just interested in making a movie right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit plus. And you don't want an animation clip that's different. Um, let's make a movie, and then we'll make a GIF. So you can turn in the movie to me, and then we can all make GIFs and uh, post them on Slack. That'll be even smaller. And so let's go to movie. And I'll make a movie. And uh, our target frame rate, let's just say our target frame rate is going to be 24. And uh, this is where it goes. And so by default, it'll make a new folder under your project that's going to be called recordings. And then put it in there. And here's the file name. And I'll call this pink. And I'm going to put my name on it, just like you should, Frina. Pink bouncing ball. And I always suggest putting the take here under these are different uh, programmatic labels to append your file name. And if you put the take in there, every time I re hit record, it'll increment this number at the end of bouncing ball, uh, the file name. And that will prevent you from accidentally recording over the previous recording. So every time I record something, it'll, even if it's the same file name, 
it'll add this number to it. And so I'll never record over the previous file. So it's just, you know, good, good workflow to make sure you don't lose anything. Because uh, if you don't do that, if you don't add, put that take in there, then if I record and then I record again, it's recording to the same file. So it'll just simply overwrite the first recording. And we don't need audio for this. And we have MP4. And then how big under capture um, or output? Yeah, output. We just want uh, full HD. Right, so that's what FHD stands for, 1920 by 1080. And uh, high. Great. And so now, if you hit play here, it'll actually play and then start recording. You can also play and then later start recording. That's useful later on. Like, say you need one, you're recording stuff for your trailer, for your game, and you know you want to hit play and then play to a certain part of the game and then record. Um, that's useful. Anyways, for right now, we'll just hit this button and record some of our bouncing ball movie. There it goes. Pretty cool. And the stop recording button, as you may have guessed, stops recording. Cool. And let's go ahead and see where that is. Now I can stop the game. And it should be inside our, the, my folder is here. Here's my folder. Now I have one called recordings and the movie should be right there. Boom. Nice. Uh, something else to be aware of right now, um, well, I guess depending on your computer, uh, when you hit record, it may look slower, like everything's running slower, because not only is it doing the work of making the game, it's also recording it. So you're asking your computer to do two things, which um, if you have a hefty machine, it should seem fine, especially now. Um, but if your machine's a little bit slower, you may notice it going slower. That's OK, because one of the awesome things about Recorder is that it's um, I don't know what even the word to use, time synchronized. So even if it looks slower while you're recording, later the movie will be running at whatever speed the game should actually run at. So even if your machine can't handle playing the game back at game FPS, the recording will be a game FPS. So that's pretty awesome um, without even having to manage any of that. And so that's great. And so here I have the MP4, and this is what I want you to send me. Um, let's make a, so this is what you would upload to Canvas, you know, to sort of say, I did this project. Uh, let's make a GIF so we could put one on um, Slack so we can show each other what we did. Um, let's go to add a new recorder, we can make a GIF. Um, and yeah, this can be smaller. So let's say 240. And coding. And yeah, this doesn't need to be very long at all. And so let's go ahead and record this GIF. Start recording. I'll turn that off. And the GIF should be in the same folder. Yeah, there it is. And uh, we're Slack. Uh, let's come up here, here, here. And ball gif I think that probably deserves exclamation points and then uh, and we should be able to attach file from my computer and again navigate to this I gotta put my unity stuff in one folder too much work right now. Um, here. Recording skiff. There it is. Open. And 
what do you guys think? Is it? Uh, and then can I get my emojis? Where are my emojis? Uh, yeah, the emojis come up when you comment. Huh. All right, well, you guys will have to comment with the fire emoji here. Uh, and then upload. Boom. Great. And uh, let's close out Slack. There we go. Uh, so we got through the whole workflow or a workflow in Unity. We, uh, you know, brought a sprite in, made a prefab, added a script to that prefab, uh, and then outputted a movie. So every time you make a new Unity project, you'll need to add the recording recorder package again. I almost do it just right off the beginning for virtually every project because I'm always using this for making you know, screenshots or making uh, things I need to post or, you know, just outputting the actual project. Because um, a lot of people are using Unity not just for games, but also for, you know, like production. Because the real-time rendering, um, as you'll come to learn, you know, is super advantageous, you know, uh, versus having to wait for an offline render from Cinema 4D, being able to just hit record and get something that's rendering in frames per second rather than seconds per frame is great. So awesome. Let me know how that's working out for you guys. And uh, I'll talk to everybody this week.